This is Mac OS Ken. Foxconn has big plans in India. Australia moves ahead on regulating digital payment platforms and dropping the name drop hysteria. It is Tuesday, the 28th of November, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. While Apple is not Foxconn's only client, there was a big story Monday about the contract manufacturer that seemed tailor-made for the Cupertino company. According to a piece from CNBC, Foxconn is investing $1.5 billion with a B dollars for something in India. According to the report, the money is marked for an unspecified building project to fulfill its operational needs. CNBC says the investment was made through a Foxconn subsidiary, Hanhai Technology India Mega Development, which totally sounds made up. I mean, it is, but it sounds like it. The assumption in the CNBC piece seems to be that the money will go toward more manufacturing capacity for Foxconn on the subcontinent. That said, CNBC points out that no details were offered besides fulfilling operational needs. To this point, Foxconn has not responded to CNBC's request for comment. Australia's plans to regulate digital payment platforms like Apple Pay and Google Pay are closer to reality. We first heard this story in mid-October. Back then, Australia's ABC News said such payment systems would likely be governed by the same rules as credit cards and EFTs at point of sale. The report had Australian Treasurer Jim Chalmers indicating that the regulations would ensure more transparency around costs charged to consumers and businesses and would not result in any material change to how consumers use the digital payment services. The report also had Apple arguing that the proposed expansion would increase regulatory burden without a net public benefit. Additionally, Apple argued that expanded regulation would stifle dynamic innovation, and besides, the company said, since Apple doesn't issue cards of its own in Australia, and since Apple Pay can only operate with an existing debit, credit, or prepaid card issued by a third party, shouldn't be subject to the proposed regulation. Those arguments seem to have fallen on deaf ears. According to a piece from Apple Insider, on Wednesday, new legislation will be introduced to the country's parliament in a bid to change laws and affect how the apps and services are regulated. According to the report, the legislation would effectively put the Reserve Bank of Australia in a position to regulate payments for new and emerging technologies rather than the current 25-year-old laws that limit the RBA's reach the new versions will empower the RBA to make changes as it sees fit. Do you think the $3,500 price tag on Apple Vision Pro is insane? CNBC had a story on Monday that might make Apple's offering sound reasonable. The Finnish VR XR firm Vario has a new headset out, the Vario XR4. Kind of a mixed message from CNBC. On one hand, the site says the XR4 is set to compete with similar headsets on offer from the likes of Microsoft and Apple. On the other hand, it says Vario's headset is intended for enterprise use cases. Certainly been priced like that in the past. The XR3 had a starting price of $6,495. That makes the XR4 seem like a steal. It's got a starting price of $3,999. Want to compare and contrast that with Apple Vision Pro? The Vario XR4 probably doesn't need an extra pair of $250 headphones to work properly. On the other hand, the XR4 leaves your hands full, using something like the wireless controllers Oculus and Meta have been using for the last few years. Assuming the average John or Jane can actually get an XR4, they would be sacrificing something huge. The App Store. Of course, they're not really competing. While Apple Vision Pro is not priced for the average consumer, 
It's not targeting the enterprise specifically. I only bring it up here to put the price tag in context. Apple logo or no, top of the line in mixed reality does not come cheap. Now perhaps at the other end of the AR, VR, MR spectrum, word from Samsung. A piece from Upload VR posted midweek last week says the South Korean electronics giant has filed a trademark for the term Samsung glasses in the UK. What are those exactly? We don't know exactly. Back in January of 2020, the piece says Sammy casually showed off a demo of AR glasses. Emphasis, it seems, on casually. The report says the company didn't say whether it was an upcoming product, nor did it acknowledge anything remarkable about showing such a device. Maybe this is that. Though there's plenty of reason to think the company is going for more of a headset thing this time. According to Upload VR, the company officially announced plans for a mixed reality headset in February of this year. A report out of South Korea in September said Sammy's XR offering would be priced around $2,000. Qualcomm announced plans for a new XR chipset hitting next year. And another report from South Korea says the company will launch an XR headset in late 2024, with Upload VR saying it's heard support for that from developers working with Samsung. But would you call a helmet glasses? It seems Samsung might. While filing a UK trademark, the site says, companies must specify the product categories they wish it to cover from an approved pre-written list. Samsung chose virtual reality headsets, augmented reality headsets, headphones, smartphones, and smart glasses. Were they going to be Charles Nelson Riley Match Game 74 glasses? Mid-70s Elton John glasses, maybe? Dig that retro future feel. And finally today, sometimes I think local news is the bane of technological know-how. I don't mean a cause of great distress or annoyance, like in the dictionary. I mean a supervillain bent on destroying technological know-how, like in Batman. Police departments and news sites spreading misinformation about how iOS 17 name drop feature works, reads the headline of a Mac Rumors piece. I'm sure they're not spreading misinformation intentionally, but the info is wrong and it is being spread. Here, very basically, is how Apple describes the process on its info page for iOS 17. Under the heading, Swap Numbers with Name Drop, the company says, hold your iPhone near someone else's iPhone or Apple Watch to use Name Drop. You'll both be able to choose the specific phone numbers or email addresses you want to share, and you can share them along with your contact poster instantly. There's also a demo video that shows the process in action with two choices turning up on the screen, share and cancel. But HUHTV and various police departments across the land seem to have missed everything after the sentence, hold your iPhone near someone else's iPhone or Apple Watch to use name drop. Citing a piece from the Washington Post, Mac Rumors says police departments in Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, Ohio, and other states have been suggesting that contact information can be shared just by bringing your phones close together. The report also links to a warning on Facebook from a Pennsylvania police department which reads, Important privacy update. If you have an iPhone and have done the recent iOS 17 update, they have set a new feature called Name Drop defaulted to On. This feature allows the sharing of your contact info just by bringing your phones close together. To shut this off, go to Settings, General, AirDrop, Bringing Devices Together, Change to Off. Parents, the warning continues, don't forget to change these settings after the update on your children's phones also to help keep them safe as well. Meanwhile, the piece says a number of local news stories have also shared similar, questionable name drop information. While one that I checked out does indicate a certain level of choice for the users, that comes in the form of a couple of lines at the end of the story and still doesn't make clear that cancel 
is one of the options offered. That said, it's not all bad. Over on Instagram, David Ginsburg posted a screenshot of WGN quoting a Wired story saying, Apple's new name drop feature is not a security risk. The one thing everybody is getting right, name drop is on by default. But it's not going to give out your info by default. For its part, Mac Rumors sees the feature not as a potential threat, but a probable annoyance. That's because it's likely to activate when your phone is next to someone else's and unlocked in a situation like a dinner or meeting. With the sudden spate of negative feedback, the site figures Apple may change the default setting to off in a future update. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more in that your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4084. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.